The Bears-Packers rivalry gets renewed this weekend. The Bears have been searching high and low for a franchise quarterback since Sid Luckman. The Packers have had two of the all-time greats back-to-back in Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers as a result. And Rodgers made this point earlier in the week. When Favre became the Packers quarterback, the Bears were leading the all-time series by a fairly comfortable margin. Now that is the other way, thanks to the presence of those two guys. They get together this weekend. And every time I see the Bears at 3-2, and two, I think it's a misprint. How are the Bears 3-2? and two? They're one game behind Me the Packers. They win this game. Me they're too. technically in first place. It feels like they're 0-5 yeah. or 1-4, and 4, doesn't it? Yeah. If you're – listen – if you're listening to, to, and look, I'm not there, and I don't know what they're saying, but I have a good feel for it. If you listen to Chicago Talk Radio, I'm sure that the most that most of the people who are calling are dissatisfied about how the Bears are playing. Now, hard to be that way after you go to Vegas and win. But Mike, I want to take a quick 180 and just tell you one thing that always will stick in my mind about the Bears-Packers rivalry, Okay. I was covering a Bears-Packers game in 1990 for Sports Illustrated. And the rivalry was really at its peak. And the Bears were better. And I remember two things. I was going to follow the Bears team bus from Appleton, Wisconsin to Green Bay. It's about 28, 30 miles. It's a nice little half-hour drive on a Sunday morning. I get in the car. I get behind the bus. And I pull out and I start following them. And I'm listening to the radio and the radio comes on and they say, this is the rockin' apple in Green Bay on Bears Still Suck weekend. (laughs) And I follow them. I follow the bus and about five miles outside of Appleton on the road to Green Bay, I see this strange sight on the side of the road. It's a four lane highway. Buses are going maybe 50, 55 miles an hour. And I see this strange sight. There is a gigantic, must be an eight foot tall and very wide stuffed brown bear hanging by a rope from a tree. And there are a boy and a girl in the backyard of this house abutting this road. And they are both having their baseball bats out and they're slamming the crap out of this poor bear just as the Bears buses go by. And I said, this, ladies and gentlemen, is a rivalry. They first met November 27, 1921, nearly 100 years ago. The Decatur Staley's 20, the Green Bay Packers 0. They have met 202 total times. The Packers currently lead 101 to 95 with six ties. And they've only ever met once in the postseason. That was the 2010 NFC Championship game when the Packers beat the Bears and then went on to win their most recent Super Bowl. This one on Sunday, Justin Fields has been okay, we keep waiting for him to take off. And is it the offense holding him back? Is it him? We don't know. They're not going to have Damian Williams, most likely, who was the replacement uh, for the, the the starting running back. You know, they're gone and they're forgotten. Uh, Khalil Herbert will take over for Damian Williams if he can't play. And uh, it, it, I just I think the, the Bears are going to have a hell of a time here. It, it'll be very compelling if they beat the Packers. But look at what the Packers have done since they lost that week one game somehow to the Saints. They, they, they have found their groove offensively and defensively. And uh, I saw the spread for this was four and a half points. I don't know what Vegas is thinking on this one because the Packers are clearly the better team. You know, hey, Mike, by the way, you just mentioned it. And I just keep thinking about this and how weird it is. You know, is there a weirder or more outlier score of the National Football League season than New Orleans 38, Green Bay 3. And, you know, there's a lot of reasons to say that's the weirdest score, but just think of it. That happened about 35 days ago. It feels like it was 35 years ago. And, and you know, the Packers, they've got their stuff together now. And again, I think the only way Green Bay loses this game is if Khalil Mack wrecks it. Uh, that's that's the only way I can see them getting really frustrated, flustered, and not putting up 28, 30 points. I just don't see any way that the Bears can score in the high 20s in this game. Bills 
Steelers from that same day. Another one that you look back at and say, how in the hell did that happen? Pittsburgh going into Buffalo and winning 23 to 16. The Chiefs trying to get right. But at least that Washington. was a competitive game. Right. That was I a agree. competitive I game. Agree. 38 to 3. <laughs> And the Packers uh, continue to be fueled apparently by the memory of that because they have been the exact opposite ever since. The Chiefs trying to be the exact opposite of what we've seen. Now, they're two and three. Their three losses are against three, four and one teams. A couple of weeks ago, they had a get right game in Philadelphia. They go to Washington this weekend. And the defense is really the concern, Peter. 7.1 yards per play. Are you kidding me? How are you going to beat anybody? I don't care who's on your offense. If you're giving up 7.1 yards per play, you're going to have to score. 40 points a game to have a chance against the uh, to, to beat whoever the Chiefs may be playing, but they are playing Washington, and this just feels like one where the Chiefs try to reestablish themselves in some way. Hey, look, you know, all I know is that, and I've heard Andy Reid and everybody talk about, hey, you know, our big problem, it's turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. And yes, okay, in the last two seasons combined, Patrick Mahomes threw 11 interceptions. Well, in five weeks, he's already thrown six. So uh, it's it's bizarre, it's strange, all that, whatever you want to call it. But to me, that is that is not nearly the biggest problem. You know, turnovers, turnovers, whatever. That's not the biggest problem. The problem is that in five games, they've allowed 29, 36, 30, 30, and 38 points. They have not had a representative game on defense yet this year. And so I look at this team and I say, you know, you can complain about turnovers all you want. And Mahomes has been sloppy. But it, it, none of it is really going to matter unless they fix what ails them on defense. And, and Mike, I wrote about this this week. Okay. I want you to think back to draft day 2020. And how we were celebrating the Kansas City Chiefs for being geniuses of taking a guy who was going to be 15% better than Brian Westbrook was in Philadelphia. Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. Well, so far, what would you say about Clyde Edwards-Hilaire after one year and one month? Is he maybe not Brian Westbrook. a B running back? He's a, yeah. he's a C-plus running back. He's not Brian Westbrook. And keep this in mind. To take Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, the Kansas City Chiefs passed on Antoine Winfield Jr. How great would he look right now alongside of Tyron Matthew in that secondary? And they passed on Trevon Diggs, who I forget, it was I think it was Deion Sanders. Some, somebody said last week, he's Defensive Player of the Year. He's not just the best corner in the league. He's Defensive Player of the Year so far. So... As I think Kansas City has done a great job setting up this team for long-term success, but I'll tell you what, that draft could haunt them. Well, and when the defense is that bad, that's how the offense ends up getting sloppy because it feels a greater sense of urgency to do more with the opportunities that it has, and that may be contributing to the mistakes from Patrick Mahomes because he knows he can't trust his defense the way he could in the past. You mentioned Trevon Diggs. He's leading the NFL with six interceptions through five games, and the 4-1 and one Cowboys go to New England where the Patriots are 2-3, and 0-3 oh at home potentially falling to 0-4 at home if they lose to the Cowboys. Can Mac Jones, the rookie starter for the Patriots, have any luck against that Cowboys defense, which is dramatically better than it was last year, Peter? Well, Mike, you know, Bill Belichick always does a good job in trying to take something away from what you do very well on offense. But, I mean, right now Dallas has so many offensive weapons that Bill Belichick would have to try to neutralize, uh, you know, so many of them to really shut down this team. And again, to me, the only way that Belichick and the Patriots are going to be able to have success in this game in keeping the Cowboys from scoring in the 30s is putting pressure on Dak Prescott with a minimum amount of rushers. They need to stay back and cover. They need to cover C.D. Lamb and Amari Cooper, obviously. And so in this game, I think it's incumbent on the Patriots to make sure you don't have to blitz too much because that is just going to be playing 
right into the hands of Dak Prescott. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.